Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another Reaction Wednesday, where today I am going to be ranking every single Cardiff City striker from the last 10 seasons. Now, thank you very much to this legend right here for suggesting me the video idea. Really appreciate it. And also, if you want to suggest me another thing to react to, do a tier list of, or anything for that matter, then stick it in the comments, and you might get a shout-out if you suggest a good option. But apart from that, let's get on with it straight away. So the categories we have got today include God, Very Good, Decent, Average, inconsistent, didn't play enough, bad, and then completely awful. Now, something I didn't actually realise until making this tier list myself was the amount of strikers that we have had in the last 10 years. Put your guesses in right now, guys. We have had 46 strikers. Look at that! I mean, I'm sorry, but for 10 years, that is absolutely appalling, guys. OMG, but anyway. So first up, we have Mr. John Parkin himself. Floated around a lot of the lower leagues. What a monster he was. Feed the beast and he will score. Anyone who remembers in like 2011, 2012, those were the chance for big John Parkin. Scored an absolute worldie against Norwich City away. Scored some good goals, but was a bit inconsistent uh, from time to time. I kind of want to put him in inconsistent, but I do think he was quite decent for us, you see, at times. No, I'm going to put him in inconsistent. Next up, we have probably got one of the best strikers on the list in Jay Bothroyd. Scored a handful of goals. He is still the last championship player to be called up to the England squad. And that was all the way back in 2010-11, which was absolutely donkeys ages ago now. Scored a handful of goals for us. I think he even got top scorer at a point. He was absolutely amazing. Yeah, straight away in God. Now, this is when the dribble starts to come into the tier list. Next up, we got Javi Guerrera. Uh, played for us, I believe, under Russell Slade. And he was a Solskjaer sign-in. Uh, all I can remember was he wasn't very good, scored no goals for the club. I don't think he only played three matches though, so I'm going to put him in didn't play enough, guys. I was tempted to put him bad, but he's going to go in not played enough. Next up, we've got Matt Smolter's Dali, who signed from Mulder in the Premier League. Um, I'd say he's quite a decent striker, got a great goal against West Brom to sneak a last-minute draw. Um, he's, he's had some very good moments, but I don't think he was overly good for us. But then again, look at Cardiff from the, towards the end of that first Premier League season. An absolute disaster. He was probably the best out of the new signings, so I'm probably going to put him in decent here. Next up, we've got Wilfred Zaha, another Solskjaer signing. Signed on loan from Man United when we're in the Premier League. He wasn't good at all at Cardiff. He, may, he had some good moments, but like John Parkin, I think he was pretty inconsistent. And overall, I'd say, in fact, poor. Um, I don't want to put him in bad or awful because look at the player he's turned out to be now. Uh, and I think Palace fans would absolutely kill me if I put him in bad or awful. So I'm, I'm going to put him in inconsistent. Next up, we have a rather forgettable player, except I still remember him, in Warren Feeney. I believe he actually played 25 games for the club. We actually loaned him out to Swansea and he actually scored, but never scored a goal in a Cardiff shirt. He wasn't particularly good, but he wasn't the worst player in this tier list. So I'm going to put him in bad, guys. Next up, we have club legend and record goal scorer for a season in Super Robert Earnshaw. Now, his second spell at Cardiff, he did get a few goals here and there, but he was starting to show his age. But the thing is, if that first spell at Cardiff didn't exist, I would probably, I'd probably put him in average. But, but I am good off the last 10 years, but I'm sorry, I cannot put a club legend in average. He's going to have to go in God, unfortunately, guys. Next up, we've got Eon Doyle. I believe this was a Russell Slade signing. In terms of striker ability, he, he was okay. He scores a few goals from time to time. I think he got five or six goals in a Bluebird shirt in 16 appearances and then started to... He's really a League One striker, guys, but I think he did okay with us. I'm going to put him in average. Next up, we have Tommy Smith. Really crucial player in the promotion to the Premier League. Um, yeah, decent. Good Malky Mackay signing. Just a shame he couldn't really do it in the Premier League. But then again, look at the quality we had there. We had the likes of Whittingham, Bellamy... Craig Noon, Kimbo Kyung, so many great winger players there. But either way, Tommy Smith, great for squad depth, guys. And I believe he actually played at front one or two times as well, so I'm going to have to put him in this list in decent. Next up, we have by far the worst player in this entire team list in Frederick Gnogby. Just looking at him makes me sick. I remember we played in the Carabao Cup against Bristol Rovers. He was the striker in that game, played up front, missed an open goal. We know went on to lose that game. Absolutely terrible performances for Cardiff. 15 games, no goals, terrible player, awful. And in fact, I have no idea where he is right now. Right, actually, let's have a Google quick. Frederick Gnogby does not exist. Nah, that can't be right, guys. Guys, after that disaster spell at Cardiff, he hasn't played for another club. Oh my lord. Following his departure, he decided to retire from football on doctor's advice due to a long-term injury. Anyway, moving on. Next striker, we got Jamie Ward. 
bit of a forgettable signing under Neil Warnock in that promotion season. I can't actually remember anything he really did, so I'm going to put him in did not play enough, guys. Next up, we have Bobby Decker Dover reed now at Fulham. He had some good moments for us, but just didn't suit the style of play, in particular to Warnock's ball. Ended up selling him to Fulham after we sent him out on loan the season after we got relegated from the Premier League. I'd say he was all right in a Cardiff shirt. I'm going to put him in decent. A lot of people are going to hate me for that, though. Next up, we've got Omar Bogle. Had some good moments. Did get that stupid red card in the seven-side derby, I do remember. But he did score some good goals for us, and he did fill in where he needed to. Good. He's a really good backup uh, striker, especially if you're in lower championship, and good for League One as well. Uh, I do think he was pretty inconsistent in a Bluebird shirt, though. Had his injury problems as well, so... I'm going to put him in inconsistent. Next up, we have Ricky Lambert, signed on a free transfer, of course, from West Brom. Ended his career at Cardiff City as well. He was a good striker in the day. I believe he had the highest penalty conversion rate in the Premier League. Uh, yeah, really good player, I'd say. Just He was a bit old when he came to Cardiff. He did okay for us. Did score some goals and a few penalties. So, mm, this is difficult where I'm going to put him. I'm going to put him in average. Next up, we have Super Kenny Miller. Critical in that first Malky Mackay season, getting us to the Carling Cup final. Really good player, scored us loads of goals. He was fantastic up front and really good until the likes of Fraser Campbell and us pushing into the Premier League as well. So he is going straight into very good guys. Next up, we have Adam LaFondra. Didn't really score too many goals against us, but did fill him in the right places when we needed him. I believe he's currently out on loan at Mumbai City from Sydney. He's been going around the Australian leagues for a while. But in a Cardiff shirt, though, I wouldn't say he was particularly spectacular or particularly bad. I'd say he was pretty... Now no, he was... Inconsistent, I'd say. On his day, he was very good. Yeah, inconsistent. Next up, we have current Newport County player in Nicky Maynard. And first of all, look at that face. He is really not happy to be in that red kit, guys. Then again, who would be? Let's face it. It is a Cardiff shirt at the end of the day. He had some okay moments for us. Uh, I'd say he was... He did his job, really. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put him in average. Next up, we have Alex Ravel. I believe he played like 26 games for Cardiff. Only scored a few goals. Not particularly the best of player, but I thought he was okay at times here and there. It was sort of a typical Russell Slade sign-in. He wasn't one of the worst players in the list. Yeah, average. Next up, we have Joe Boogie. Very forgettable in a kind of shit. Played one game. Simple. Didn't play enough, but he's a Mulder legend, I believe. Scored loads of goals for them. Very good player. Just a shame he couldn't do it in the Premier League for us. Next up, we have O'Kenifzo. Good player, scored a hat full of goals in that Neil Warnock season. He was inconsistent at the time, especially when we went into the Premier League. Now he's obviously at Millwall on loan from West Brom. He's not going to go into inconsistent though, because looking at some of the players in inconsistent, I can't put him there because he was much better than that. Um, you know what? Because of how pivotal he was at times, I've got to put him in very good. Just struggle with injuries though, that's the only problem with him. Next up we have Ibrahim Mete. I believe he played a few cup games under Neil Warnock. I actually saw him play once against Shrewsbury. I didn't think he was that bad, but he just hadn't played enough for the Bluebirds. Next up we have Undisputed Club Legend. What's that coming over the hill? It's Michael Chopra. It's Michael Chopra. What a player he was. Scored a ton of goals. Probably one of the best championship partnerships ever in Jay Bothroyd and Michael Chopra. Especially since the turn of the century. Yeah, he is going straight in God, guys. Next up, we have Conor McCallney, who was on loan from Everton at the time. I believe he was a Russell Slade signing up from... Correct, correct me if I'm wrong in the uh, comments, guys. But eight games, I think he scored one goal. A bit up and down player. He's not in bad or awful. Definitely not looking at the likes of Warren Feeney or Gnogby. Oh, it still makes me sick thinking about him. But yeah, I'm going to probably put him in average. He did go on to have a pretty decent career in the lower leagues, though, in the likes of League 1 and League 2. So he was he was average, really. Next up, we have a good signing in. There's only one Lex Simmers. If you remember this guy, you deserve a medal. He had some good moments in a Cardiff shirt. He could have been better, but he could have been much worse as well. I wouldn't say he was particularly inconsistent or in average as well. So I'm going to put him in decent. He was probably one of the better players in that 2015-16 season. One of the better Russell Slade signings. Next up, we have Eaton Velionka, who I believe was a Malky Mackay signing. Had a lot of potential, scored a load of goals when he was out on loan. Only played three games for the Bluebirds. He wasn't bad or awful. He was he was okay in those games, really. Just wasn't really good enough for Cardiff. He's mainly a League 1, League 2 uh, caliber player, really. So I'm going to put him in didn't play enough. I can't put him in bad or awful, guys. Next up, we had Robert Glatzel. Had his good moments, currently out on loan at Mainz. Um, I'd say he's fairly inconsistent, though, as a player, so I'm going to put him in inconsistent, guys. However, that can change. He has scored some great goals on his day, but if he comes back to Cardiff next season, maybe, and puts him some good goals, then maybe he could go up to decent, but 
He, at times, he has just been a bit too inconsistent for me. Next up, we've got Mark Harris. He's had some very good moments in a Cardiff shirt. Of course, scoring on his league debut as well. He used to come off the bench a lot under Warlock a few seasons back, and he's starting to break into the team now. I kind of want to put him in decent, but I think it's too early for that at the moment. He's certainly not average, so I'm just going to put he hasn't played enough, but he is sort of a youngster coming through at the moment. So he is definitely going to move up at some point. But don't think that I think he's a bad player, guys. He is excellent for his age, especially. Next up, we have Heider Helgerson in a Cardiff shirt. I thought he was very good. Filled in where he needed to. Scored his first goal in the seven-side derby, which is all that matters, really. Uh, to be honest, he's not up there with Kenny Miller or Kenneth Zahor. And he's certainly not further down there. Yeah, I'm going to put him in decent. Next up, we have Sammy Amiobi. Six-foot-seven monster. Tall guy. He's going to go straight into inconsistent, guys. Had his up and down moments. He wasn't overly bad, but he wasn't overly good either. Just a bit inconsistent in a Cardiff shirt, guys. Next up, we have Jet. J. Emmanuel Thomas, who actually came to Cardiff on loan from Arsenal. 14 games, two goals. I thought he was a pretty solid player. Just a shame he couldn't net more, really. Um, I'm going to put him in. I'd say he was fairly decent for the Bluebirds. Next up, we have Joe Mason. Very good player. Got some really important goals for us. Spent a lot of his time at Cardiff as well. Important in promotion season. Fairly good in the Premier League as well. And then in the seasons after the Premier, he was particularly good as well. Until I think we sold him to Bolton Wanderers. If I'm correct. If I'm wrong, correct me, guys. I think he was at Wolves as well. Uh, so I'm going to put him in very good. Actually, no. Decent. Next up, we have Josh McGinnis, a Northern Ireland international. Was a youngster at Cardiff City when he did come to us. I think he played eight games, couldn't really score. But he had bags of potential. He's not bad or awful. Uh, yeah, as uh, out of respect, I'm going to put him in didn't play enough, guys. Next up, we have another club legend in Fraser Campbell. Scored some really important goals in the Premier League. If you remember that Man City game, you all know it quite well. Excellent player for Cardiff. Scored some good goals as well. So, yeah, very good. Next up, we have Kiefer Moore, current striker, 16 goals already this season. He's going to get above 20. He's our first 20 goal a season striker since Jay Bothroyd, uh, literally for that reason. And he's going to get there, isn't he, guys? Touch wood. Um, I'm going to have to put him in God. Just based off one season, that is pretty spectacular, guys. Also, guys, ignore the fact that Kenwin Jones were just in very good. My computer did glitch a bit then. But anyway, moving on to Kenwin Jones. Uh, he did some okay moments in a Cardiff shirt, but... He is the epitome of inconsistent. I remember at a Brentford away game, he skilled quite a few players in that defence. And then Kenwin Jones did what Kenwin Jones did best and skied it straight over the away end. So for that reason, he's going in inconsistent. Next up, we have Man United wonder kids and inconsistent player at Cardiff in Frederico Makeda. He scored some good goals for us. I think he got eight goals in 27 games, which was fairly okay. I wouldn't put him in inconsistent because he did get that many goals, but he was at times, you see. He's currently at Panathinaikos, I believe, in the Greek League. Scoring a good number of goals, but his career should have been much better than that. I'm going to put him in decent. I can't put him with some of the players in inconsistent, guys. Next up, we have Nat Jarvis. I remember him playing in a Cardiff shirt, but there's actually no photo evidence of him doing so. So I've got a picture of him when he was just signing for Barrytown United, and that's where he has ended up, unfortunately. He was a youngster at the time at Cardiff City. He did okay at times when he came on, but he just didn't play enough, unfortunately. And it's a shame that he did end up uh, playing for Barrytown and that his career didn't take off in ways that many people thought that it would. Next up, we have Umar Niasse, who came on loan from Everton in the Premier League. Now, you know exactly where I'm going to put him, guys. Straight in bad. I mean, he's not completely awful. He made some excellent runs for Cardiff. He just could not score at all. <laughs> we were just crying out for him to get a goal for us, but he was just unlucky on so many occasions. But he did make some really good runs down the line, crossing it in, playing it well, but just unlucky, really. But unfortunately, I am going to have to put him in bad. He was good and completely awful. At the same time. Next up we have James White. Straight up. Didn't play enough. I believe he's still at the club now. Still a youngster guy. So I can't comment much on that. Next up we have Gary Medine. God knows how many games he played for us. And didn't score. Yeah he's definitely going straight in the level of Warren Feeney. And also Umar Niasse. Next up we have Danny Wards. Pretty decent in a Cardiff shirt. Could have done more. But could have done a lot less. Yeah straight and decent. Next up now if you remember this guy. You deserve a medal. Yannick Wildshirt. 
If you remember when he played against Derby, then oh my, probably one of the worst individual performances ever from any player. He was the reason that we pretty much lost 3-1. He was pretty bad in a Cardiff shirt, just very unlucky that he couldn't perform. But it, we did still go up to the Premier League. Mind, it was very close considering some of the games that he played in. Performances-wise, he's Gnogby level, unfortunately. Next up, we have Ross McCormack. Good player in 2010 and 11. Youngster as well. And to be honest, for what he did at that age, it was very good. Scored a good few goals for us as well, especially at Ninian Park. Really good player. I believe he did score in a South Wales derby as well in the last game at Ninian Park. I think it was a penalty, wasn't it, guys? Uh, so, yeah, he's going straight into very good for that reason. Next up, we have Rudy Gestead. Pretty inconsistent, to be honest. Yeah, he's going in the inconsistent category, although he could score some good goals on his day, guys. Yeah, good Malky Mackay signing, good for squad depth, but pretty inconsistent as a player. Next up, we have Idris Saadi. I believe he was a Russell Slade signing. Only played two games for the Bluebirds. I don't think he was particularly good in either of them. Scored no goals. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put him in didn't play enough guys just out of respect really next up We have Welsh international Tom Lawrence really did what he could for the Bluebirds, but didn't do too much either Fairly up and down player, but I'm gonna put him in average guys next up We have Isaac Vassell scored one great goal on his debut if you remember and it's been out for the last 18 months So so I'm gonna put him in did not play enough and at the moment Max Waters hasn't played enough games for the Bluebirds as well So I'm gonna have to put him there as well so guys, this is the completed tier list. Now let me know if you agree with it. As far as I'm looking at it, I can pretty much agree with that, to be honest. Maybe there'll be some movements. But either way, guys, let me know if you agree with this tier list. If there's any movements you would make in the comments section below. And yeah, let me know what you think of it as well, guys. I could put it on Twitter and I'll, and I've got a feeling this is probably going to get some heat here and there. So guys, if you have enjoyed this video, then please remember to leave a like. And if this is the first ever video you see by me, then please remember to like, comment, subscribe, do what you can to support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. Follow all my social medias in the description below. And I will see you all next time for another Reaction Wednesday. Hoyle Vow.